we're already up to .NET MAUI Preview 12, 12, and this time there is a big focus on Shell, and Shell got some dependency injection support now. So let's go check out what it's all about. Before we are going to see all the ins and outs of .NET MAUI Preview 12, first I have to do a big shout out to my members because on top of subscribing to my channel, you can also join this channel as a member. So big thank you to Louise Worth for joining my channel as a senior developer. Go check out that join button down below to see what it's all about. And of course, if you're new here on this channel, very welcome. Don't forget to subscribe if you like what you're seeing here and um, all the content, all the tips, all the exam forms, all the .NET MAUIs will come to you on your feed automatically. Now, let's go see what .NET MAUI Preview 12 can bring you today. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again, um, the .NET MAUI previews aren't official until David wrote a blog post about it. So here we are, um, David wrote a great blog post about Preview 12 and uh, you can see right off the bat here what is new. So we have new docs, so go over to docs.microsoft.com slash .NET slash MAUI and you will see all the new docs right here. This is really cool, this is growing and growing. Um, I mean, truth be told, there is of course a lot of documentation migrated from Xamarin Forms to .NET MAUI just because 90% of the APIs will be the same, so all the docs will be coming to here as well. Um, but there will also be new stuff to guide you on how to get started with your .NET MAUI app. So be sure to check that out. This is a growing library right here. Um, but other stuff, of course, that is actually inside of the .NET MAUI box is a flyout view handler implemented. So that's basically it came over from the Xamarin Forms renderers to the new handler architecture for .NET MAUI, um, new compatibility handlers, a new Z index property added which allows you to um, um, kind of arrange all kinds of layers of, of your UI so send things to the back or bring things to the to the front because that's what the Z index do, does, right? Or the Z index, uh, depending on where you are in the world. Um, .NET 6 unification iOS types. I think this is an important one, especially if you're, well, not even if you're just doing iOS stuff, but there is some breaking changes in um, .NET 6. I think you only need to worry about this mostly if you are writing some um, code for like, you know, iOS specific or um, platform specific code basically. Um, but also if you are a library maintainer, I think this might be something as well because then you are writing the iOS and macOS specific code, right? So there's definitely going to be some um, breaking changes here and it also says like all code must be recompiled to support .NET 6. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know all the ins and outs for, for this. Um, I have seen a couple of people on Twitter who aren't very happy with this, but I've also seen like the team over on the Microsoft side say like, we've been going back and forth about this for years and this is basically the only option we have moving forward. And they don't like it as well. I mean, Brit no one likes breaking changes, not the person implementing them, not the people consuming all the stuff. So um, this is there's no winners here, basically. So this is going to hurt. Um, and I think it's going to hurt a lot for like, you know, for this .NET 6 and this, this release. But from there, hopefully everything should be better and um, hopefully it should never ever happen again. Um, but at least, you know, if this is something that you are um, looking into, if you have written iOS and Mac OS specific stuff, then definitely go check this one out in more detail. Um, Windows extended toolbar for non-shell. To be honest, I don't know what it is. I think it has something to do with the title bar here that you can see in the screenshot as well, uh, where you can do a little bit of extensive stuff, um, which is really awesome. Um, but the main focus in Preview 12 is shell. So there has been navigation in .NET MAUI shell um, where you could uh, now implement all these routes. I think this is already possible in, in Xamarin Forms as well. So if you look here, this is like a, a shell app and you can see here like, you know, the content template. So we have a tab bar with tabs and a title and an icon. And this is then the actual content with the content template. So that's the page that's going to be loaded. But maybe you have pages that are not, you know, visible, not in a tab or whatever. So for instance, if you're going to go to, um, I don't know which one, the discover page, maybe, I don't know which example they're going to use here, but this is the, the .NET podcast app. Um, so I, I should definitely still um, make a video about that. Let me know in the comments if you're still interested in that, uh, where I walk you through the code of this podcast app that has been demoed at .NET Conf. Um, so this is the sample that you've been seeing in the blog is about this app, um, because this uses shell. So that's amazing, right? Um, 
So this is this is the page that you're seeing there, and it shows you podcasts. So you can see it here, and whenever you click on one, you want to go to the details page. But the details page is not something that you want to show in a tab down here at the bottom, right? So it it the page has to be there, the details page, but you don't want to show it in the UI necessarily unless um, the user is navigating to it. So um, what you can do now is say routing.register route. Um, so name of, so this is the page that you're going to use, and then also the type of that same page. So that's how you register register routes for pages that are not necessarily somewhere in the UI hierarchy, um, right? So that's how you can do that. And then when you want to go to it, you can say shell.current.go to async. Again, I think this is already in Xamarin Forms as well. And you can go to that show detail page and you can also supply the ID. That's one of the strengths of Shell, right? You can use this URL-based navigation and you can also provide query parameters um, with the show.id. And that will now automatically be bound whenever you set this attribute right here the query property, um, the ID will uh, uh, automatically be in this property right here. So now whenever you go to the show detail page with the ID specified in the route here, um, the ID will be available for you here in this property. And then in the show detail uh, view model, you can get that ID, you can get the details from your data store, from your database, whatever you have, um, and you can show the details on that page. So that's really cool. That now works also for .NET MAUI. Um, I'm not sure if this is, this is really new, but it's highlighted in this block anyway. But what is new is shell and dependency injection. A lot a lot, a lot, a lot of people have asked for this um, to make dependency injection also work for Shell. And now it's here. Um, it seems a special thanks to Brian Runk, who actually submitted a PR for this, which is a outside contributor. Um, so from the community, thank you so much. This is really amazing that people are so um, excited to see .NET MAUI that they're um, already creating these PRs and contributing um, this great functionality into .NET MAUI already. So what are you waiting for? Well, watch this video, but then what are you waiting for? Go get those contributions in .NET MAUI. Um, now, you can use this like any other thing, dependency injection. I got other videos on that, so it should pop up on your screen or find it down in the video description below. You can just use this as any other dependency injection um, in .NET MAUI. So you will just have your MAUI program. Um, you register that service, in this case, a view model, and then you can just inject that in the constructor like this. So um, I'm going to show you in a demo right now, um, but this is this is amazing. So this is there's no difference anymore between shell or non-shell or, you know, and this kind of like fits in the whole ecosystem of .NET how dependency injection is supposed to work. So this is really, really amazing. Of course, get started today. So together with this Preview 12, you now also have Visual Studio 2022 version 17.1 Preview 3, I think. Um, so go download that. Um, still, just like the last um, um, preview, we highly recommend um, throwing it all away and reinstalling all the bits just because with the workloads and some things get mixed up. If you do the upgrade but you know if you ask me then try the upgrade and if it doesn't work then you can still delete everything and start over right so um, just that's something that you can try whenever things might not work and of course feedback is welcome go check out all the links here uh, status wiki uh, to see what is implemented and whatnot go to the documentation and open your issues whenever you find something so let's open uh, visual studio right now and um, so if you want to use dotnet maui shell um, at this time you're gonna have a bad time Time because the templates aren't there yet. So uh, this didn't come from a template. Actually, what I did is I took a Xamarin Forms shell app and um, replaced all the namespaces, and now it's a Don and Maui shell app. You can actually see it right here because this is a, a little comment right here that comes from the Xamarin Forms um, template because it still references Xamarin Forms here. But I copy and pasted all the things, and it mostly works. There's one bug that I'm going to report right after recording this video. Um, I will talk you through what has happened in a little bit, but actually this works pretty well. So I'm going to run this in the Android um, subsystem for Windows and uh, you can see it coming up and this is our MAUI shell app. So this is like the shell template that you know and love, but this is now running on .NET MAUI. So that's cool, right? So I'm not sure if this is supposed to look like this, maybe, you know, my styling sense says that this maybe should look a little bit better. Um, but you know, it's it's working and it's shell and it's done and Maui. So that is really great. But if we look at how this works, so let's focus on um, 
Well, let's go to the Maui program first. Um, and I already commented out here what I'm about to do is I'm going to add the data store here, um, which the implementation of the mock data store and the items view model. That is stuff that is in the exam forms um, um, shell template. So if we look at like the, the view models right here, we have that items view model. And for our services, we have the I data store, which is the um, interface of our data store. And we have a mock data store, which just provided um, some, some items right here, some mock items that we can show in our UI. So this does a couple of things. This is all provided with the exam informs shell templates. Now, if you want to have this for yourself to have a play or maybe as a template to get started with .NET MAUI shell, I've uploaded this to a repository. So go check out the link down in the video description below um, and you can use that as well. Um, so I've done all the work for you. I've, I've went to this file scope namespaces. I removed all the usings, well, except for these, um, because these are used by the comments right here. Um, I went through the whole thing and it works and it builds and it is amazing. So what we're going to do now, if we look at um, the pages, so let's go to our views and we're going to look at our items page. Um, what we're going to see here is that we now still do new items view model, which is not something that we want, right? So um, what we going to do here is we're going to let that inject into our constructor right here. So uh, what we're going to say is the items view model. And let's just name this view model. And I'm going to remove this one. Well, actually, let me, let me put it in a comment so you know what changed. And I'm going to say view model right here. So now we expect this to be injected in our constructor. And the only thing we need to do to make that happen is um, go into our MAUI program and say builder.services.addTransient items view model. So now this is registered in our services collection and it will be injected automatically in our app shell. We don't even have to resolve our app shell through our, our app right here. We can just do new app shell. Of course, you know, if you want to make it work in something that is injected in app shell as well, um, then you can do that as well, but you don't technically have to, it will figure it out itself. Um, now here is an interesting thing. We have the dependency service register mock data store. Um, this still works because of the compatibility we have with Xamarin forms, right? So the dependency service will still work. And if we look at, um, I think our base view model, you can see that this is now dependency service.get and it will get the I data store here, right? But that's not something we want. Um, so let's just comment out this one as well. So we just have this empty data store right now. And if I want to do this in the base view model, uh, create a constructor and inject it in that, then I suddenly have to update all the view models here to get a constructor and inject the, the data store in that. So I'm not gonna do that for this example. I'm just gonna go to the items view model and I'm going to only inject the data store here. So I'm going to say I data store um, item and whoops, and I'm going to say data store. And the first thing I'm going to do here is say data store because you know this this inherits from base view model, so it has that data store property. Um, I could say data store is data store. And now also this gets injected. Well, if I update that, if I add it to my services collection here in Maui program. So let's just do that. Let's uncomment this line. And now we also have this data store registered. And actually I can go to my app XAML CS and I can comment this dependency service. And uh, we still have all these things here. So what is really cool, if I run this, um, I can now go to um, 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 the app and I can follow the whole flow basically. So we have this new app shell and this is going to go to our view model. Well, actually, uh, no, it's going to go to our items page and this requests the view model. And inside of our view model, the items view model, we now request a data store. So that's going to get the data store. All is injected. We don't need to do any code. We don't need to do any new data store, new view model. It will just work. So if I go here to my browser, you will see that the items will still come up and this now goes through the dependency injection in shell um, instead of having to new up all the things. So that is pretty amazing. And that is basically all there is in .NET MAUI Preview 12. Well, I say this is all there is in .NET MAUI Preview 12. That's of course not true. There is much, much more, but we are now entering a phase where we are getting closer to the final release, the stable release, which is still planned for Q2 to 2022. 
that's a lot of twos. Um, so, you know, as we are going towards there, uh, not a lot of new features will add it, but rather we will add bug fixes and stability fixes and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, kind of like the preview and these update videos will maybe be a, a little bit less exciting with new stuff. Um, but, you know, that just means that we are also close to getting all the new stuff into our own hands and get to play with it. Now, if you want to know more about dependency injection and that kind of stuff, um, check out this video because this video, it tells you all about dependency injection for absolute beginners. And of course, if you want to know more about .NET MAUI, please check out this playlist where I have all the videos on .NET MAUI, and that will get you started with all the preview bits that are out there today. And then you will be prepared for whatever is coming and you can um, just, you know, kickstart your app right away um, because you already know how it works. Thank you so much for watching one of my videos. Please click the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Click the like button on this video if you've actually liked it. I will very much appreciate that and I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.